What's up guys? Justin here with TheSketchPresentials.com. So today I've got kind of a different kind of tutorial for you because there's a great new tool out there <clears throat> that allows you to generate both textures and uh, maps for different things like uh, normal mapping and stuff like that, which can be really helpful in your renders. And I wanted to go ahead and go through that on this channel and kind of show you guys what's available. So uh, let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I know that generally speaking, I had kind of moved away from doing rendering tutorials on this channel, but this is a great tool and I know a lot of you work with rendering. So I figured I'd go ahead and talk about it a little bit just to give you an idea of what it can do, because this can be a huge time saver. So the tool itself that I'm gonna talk about today is called called Materialize. Uh, Materialize is basically it's a uh, tool that's designed to let you take images and create different maps from them. So you can create a texture but then you can also create the maps like the bump and displacement maps that allow you to make things look realistic in your renderings. So based on what's on their website it's been used in a lot of different uh, applications one of which was updating the materials in the un Uncharted games. So it's a great tool and the other thing that's awesome about it is it's free and it's open source. You can see how down below it's completely open source. Uh, all the source code is hosted here and you can download that and install that on your computer. So I just kind of wanted to run through the way that that works and uh, give you an idea of what you can do. So when you first run it, it's going to look kind of like this. You're basically going to have a palette here and then you're going to have a bunch of options for your different kinds of maps. And you're going to want to at least have an idea of what these maps do. Um, so just kind of a general terminology, we're going to focus on the diffuse map, which is the actual image that gets applied inside, or the repeating image that gets applied to make up your texture, as well as the height map, which uh, generates basically a height look based on the colors inside your texture in the normal map, which kind of helps you fake shadows and things like that. There's some other maps in here as well, but those are the ones we're going to focus on for this tutorial. And so to get started, what you're going to do is you're going to go up into your diffuse map because the first thing you need when you're working on a texture is you need the image that's going to make that up. And so we're going to go in, we're just going to click on this O button. And what the O button is going to do is that's going to allow you to go find a folder and load in an image file. And so in this case, I just downloaded a grass image straight from Wikipedia. So it's just an image of grass. And so when I click on it and I click select, what it's going to do is it's going to apply that to this face. So you can kind of preview and see the way that that's going to look. And you can see how you can rotate around by clicking and holding your right mouse button, or you can pan by holding the center mouse button. Um, and if you want to see the controls, you can click on this button for controls right here. So this is going to be our preview of what our texture is going to look like. Or in this case, this is a preview of this map, and there's actually a button down here for show full material, which actually going to give you a preview of what the whole thing is going to look like. But for now, we're just going to take a look at a couple of these options. So the first thing is that the diffuse map, there's a number of sliders in here that can give you an idea of different things um, that are that are changing. So everything about this is sliders, which I really like. You can really do kind of a trial and error. Um, you can do kind of a trial and error process in here when you're creating your materials instead of having to worry about figuring out exactly what those numbers need to be or anything like that. But these are all associated with um, touching up your image. So you can adjust the contrast of your image, you can adjust uh, the color saturation and the original color and what's kept in and all of those different things. So you can adjust all of these things as sliders and you can just kind of eyeball it and see what you think looks good. And then once you're done with that, once you're done making the changes, click on set as diffuse. Or for the other ones, it's going to be set as height map or whatever. And so what that does is that adjusts all of the settings that you've changed in here. And if you ever want to get back to those, you can click on the edit button. And you can click on this button for show full material to see what your material is going to look like when light's applied to it. You can see how this is really not interesting right now. It's kind of washed out and uh, there's just nothing interesting about it. But what we want to do now is we want to create a height map because when you have grass like this in real life, it kind of moves up and down. Everything has like a 3D um, 3D location associated with it. And so what we're going to do in this case is we're just going to click the button for create height map. And so when you click create height map, what that's going to do is that's going to automatically generate that map based on your image. And you can see how as you adjust this slider, you can see your original image and you can see the map that it's creating. And so the way a height map works is it 
it basically takes your image and um, your 3D renderer is going to apply a height based on the darks and lights inside of your image. So in this case, for example, if I was to turn my contrast way up, um, all of the darks would go really deep and all of the whites would go really high. And so before we change anything else, let's just go and click on the show full material. And I guess you have to click the apply button first. So if you click set as height map and then click show full material, you can see how this is now moving your geometry up and down based on that map you created. And so obviously this is way over the top. We don't necessarily want it to look like this. So you can go in here to the create button and you can adjust things like the contrast, which is going to adjust how strong that effect is. So if I click set as height map again, then I click show full material, you can see how this is a lot more realistic um, and it's not as extreme because the black and white difference in here wasn't extreme, wasn't as extreme either. And so there's a few different presets in here that you can mess around with it. Basically these, these sliders adjust the different color channels and what's being translated into this height data. So you can see how as I move this up and down, different things out of that image are becoming darker and lighter. And so if you want like a more pronounced difference, for example, you can see how I can move this up. You can see there's also a couple options in here for um, different different preset settings. So in this case, if you want your details to be really sharp, you can click on the default button. And there's a few other options down here that I don't really want to mess around with too much, um, but you can use these sliders and kind of mess around with them in order to create the look that you want. And so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to adjust my contrast up just a bit, and then I'm going to click set as height map. And so when I do that and I click on show full material, you can see how your grass material is in here. And I still don't like how strong that is so I'm going to bring my final contrast back down and that's one of the great things about this is you can basically you can experiment as much as you want in order to really generate something that you like and so what you can do is you can also come in here and you can create a normal map and you can see how the normal map kind of helps you fake those shadows and those bumps so this may be a little more helpful for something like a wood material but you can see how you can adjust all of these different things in here as well you can do crisp or smooth however you want and you can adjust all of those different things in here as well and then you can click set as normal map and so now if I show that full material you can see how I've got a fairly realistic grass texture in here with all the different different maps. But one thing about this, if you've ever worked with these before, is you know that if I was to adjust my tiling here, just so you can kind of see the way that it's um, repeating this image, you can see how you get a very pronounced line where this image is being tiled. So that's, that's the difference between seamless and non-seamless textures is when you have a texture that's getting repeated over and over again, you get these ugly seams. Well, what you can do in this case is there's actually a button in here to adjust that tiling. So if you click on tile maps and I'm going to, we'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger just so that's more pronounced. Um, so you can adjust the texture tiling um, for testing and you can see what these edges look like. Well, there's a couple different options in here for overlapping your edges and also adjusting your edge fall off in here. So you can see how this kind of blends it kind of blends the transition between those different objects. Um, so you can see how as I drag this, if I drag the edge fall off all the way to the left, those tiles are really pronounced. If I drag it all the way to the right, then everything kind of merges together. But you can see how this is a very valuable and also easy way to come in here and adjust the way that things are overlapping and tiling to make these look a little less seamed. And there's also another technique in here if you want this to do more of a rotated um, type tiling instead of where it tiles these all in straight lines and you can adjust all of these as well to kind of try to get the look that you're going for. I'm going to leave this on the overlap and I'm just going to do a little bit more here and you can adjust the texture sizing and everything else in here as well. And so once you've done that you can click on set maps and that's going to apply that. Now if you click show full material you can actually get a preview of what this material is going to look like. So you can see how I can get this uh, kind of seamless grass texture really easily. And you can do this with any kind of image, by the way. So one other thing to note is you can also adjust the way that you can preview these textures. So not only can you pl um, put these on a plane, if you go over to your material um, viewer, if you click on cube, 
this will actually place this on a cube. If you put it on a cylinder, it'll put it on a cylinder, and if a, you put it on a sphere, it'll put it on a sphere. And so not only can you adjust that um, to adjust the way that uh, things are previewed, but you can also adjust the way in, in a lot of rendering programs, you can adjust how far things are displaced using the displacement maps or the height map. And so what you can do in this case is you can actually adjust and see what those are going to look like inside your rendering program if you turn the displacement up. Or there's other options in here as well. So there's other ways to preview your textures as well. So you can really get that preview that you're looking for. But once you have all of that done, you're just going to click on the button for save project and you're just going to find a location where you want to save that. And when you save that, So in this case, this is what my materials folder looks like. You can see how all of those different maps that I had in there, like my height map and my normal map and my diffuse all get saved in that folder. And they're easy to bring in. You can see how you can kind of flip back and forth between these to see the different maps that are generated. And you can bring all of those in in order to create a realistic look in your rendering software. So in this case, let's go ahead and preview this in SketchUp using V-Ray. And I've already um, created this material using just my grass material. And what you have to do in this case, I'm going to turn these maps off for a second because I've already preloaded everything in, is you have to load in those maps in order to get this look. So if you run this, for example, right now, like let's say I was to rotate down a little bit as I run this interactive render, you can see how right now it's just kind of this texture file that's applied to this face. However, if you go in and you load in the bump map and the displacement map, and you zoom out a little bit, you can see how this will actually render in um, your displacement and your up and down in order to really let you create that realistic texture inside your rendering program. And this is great for like wood materials or just all sorts of materials. And it's just really easy. Instead of having to learn how to use Photoshop to do all this, you can do it really quickly using this tool. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Do you find this useful? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.